Hello, this is Hakuna Bean, and today we are going to read some SCP. We're going to be reading a 001 proposal that I just decided to click on right after I'm done with this little intro here. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And please, do come by my debut stream, which is on the 23rd of June. Let's get right into this. I haven't actually chosen which one just yet. Still looking. I think we'll do I feel like the order just changed again. Oh, I remember this one. This one is gonna be a bit long though. Okay, we are not doing this one today. Sorry. We're gonna do this one. The Scarlet King. <sighs> or we could do Street of Papers. I think this one is probably the best for us right now. <sighs> Out number. SCP-001, Object Class, Keter. Oh no, it's safe. Special Catering Procedures. Following the recent investigations of Dr. Robert Montauk, no action is currently needed to contain SCP-001. It is functionally self-containing, and any Foundation interference may harm or alter its containment irreversibly. No Foundation personnel are to engage with any new matters related to SCP-001, with the exception of related anomalies already in Foundation containment. SCP-001 is an entity ordinarily referred to as the Scarlet King. SCP-001 is currently located in several alternate dimensions simultaneously and is unable to enter into the Prime Dimension. However, it is believed to have been Italy attempting entry for a period of several thousand under 300 years. We'll look into that later. Maybe in another video. Under 300 years. SCP-001's physical, mental, and conceptual properties are unknown to the Foundation. Nevertheless, it continues to assert a strong influence on a number of individuals and events within the Prime Dimension. It is believed that SCP-001's existence represents an ongoing but armament Tashkent class cross pollination scenario. A K class uh, uh, scenario wherein the imminent alteration of reality or eradication of all human life is caused by the interaction between two anomalous objects of a radically different in type. Should SCP-001 enter the Prime Timeline, an irreparable alteration to normalcy will occur. Containment of SCP-001 is used to be top priority is, however, unnecessary. Any attempt to alter SCP-001's classification or object class will result in immediate dis Missile from the O5 Council. References in art and oral traditions to SV001 appear across a wide variety of human and non human cultures across the universe, including in communities which have never or previously had any contact with one another. Common descriptions within these traditions are of a red creature of immense size, ordinarily wearing a golden crown or other headdress signifying royalty. Although the name ascribes to SCP 001 vary, 
the majority contain two elements, a word signifying some form of royalty com combined with a word signifying the color red. Cultures which do not have a concept of the color red but follow this name pattern universally use the color analogous to the English concept of the color red. Most personnel, except those working on anomalies related to SCP-001, possess no knowledge of this entity. As part of SCP-2317's containment procedures, low four personnel, with the exception of Dr. Robert Montauk, Project Lee on SCP-001, SCP-231, and SCP-2317, are to be informed that 2317 is in fact SCP-001. The truth of this is unknown, although it is a hypothesis which has received a strong support among several members of the Council. The apparently multidimensional nature of SCP-001, however, renders the possibility of SCP-2317 being anything more than a single aspect of SCP-001 unlikely. It is unknown when SCP-001 was discovered. The loss of several archives concerning the Foundation's origins in the 1989 Starling Coup has prevented a full reconstruction of events, although an investigation shortly following data expunged, a variety of groups dedicated to bringing SCP-001 into prime dimension have existed over the years. The most recent of these has been the Children of the Scarlet King, which was destroyed in a joint GLC SCP operation in January 2018. Its former leader, leader Depeche Spivak, is currently in Foundation custody under the designated Person of Interest 3172. Update January 6, 2018. SV001 has received many subjects of an intensive, extensive investigation by Dr. Robert Montauk, project lead on SV001 231 and SCP-2317, and the Visor of Procedure 110 Montauk, which is an unknown procedure that you are to either assume the worst or the most hopeful when it comes to. Based on the results of this investigation, SCP-001 has been downgraded to safe following a decision taken by the Council. Upon the request as of the former O513, a number of documents related to this investigation can be found below, in order to provide context and further information pertaining to this theory. These have been curated, categorized, and included by the former O513 herself, with the permission of O51, or in order to provide some context to this re-evaluation. This is some old SCP stuff that we haven't seen in a while. Phase 1, Blood. The following is an interview between Dr. Robert Montauk and Person of Interest 3172. Date January 4th, 2018. Interviewer Dr. Robert Montauk. Interviewee Person of Interest 3172. Site 713. Interview room 2. Begin log. Again, Dr. Montauk, I don't understand what you people want from me. Hello to you too, the Apesh. I'm sorry to do this to you again. I think it's silly to you, to be honest. What we want from you are answers. It's been what? Weeks? Months? You've dragged me down here into one of your interview rooms and asked me these endless questions. You are one of your lackeys. I'm sorry you've been made to feel uncomfortable. It wasn't my intention. But it's hard to keep tabs on everything anymore. Have the guards been treating you badly in any way? No, not really. I can't really complain. It's just her eyes. They look so dead. So cold. If you like, I can rearrange some personnel and put someone else on your security detail. We're a bit short or staffed around here at the moment, and a lot of our best folk looks our way. And then there's the paperwork and the endless oversight. This was some trouble with, well, you don't need to know about that. You weren't what I expected, you know. You thought the Foundation would be different? No, I thought you would be. You would heard of me? Of what you've done. Procedure 110 Montauk. 
or the people in my circles have done some dark things in their time, but that. I merely did what was necessary, Mr. Spivak. As a foundation researcher, and as someone who doesn't want to see his loved ones die. Yes, that's very like the foundation, isn't it? Everything done is justified by what is necessary. You see the world, the people moving through it, living lives touched only by totalizing universal laws of society and physics, and everything has to be channeled through those laws, and that which lies outside it is to be contained. It's all so very sim simple. You wouldn't say that if you worked here. Some of us has called you evil. I don't think that's quite it. That is kind of you to say, and to tell you the truth, I don't think you're quite what I expected either, given, especially given your reputation. I've been told I am a hard person to get along with. Too cryptic, they say. One person even called me airy. <sighs> Sorry. I don't think I'd call you airy. Your head may be in the clouds, but you seem to be madding maddenly maddeningly smug about it. Granted, not as smug as some of the delusional cultists who have passed through here. I suppose I should be thankful for that, at least. I'll try not to take that as an insult, but this is what I don't understand. Your procedure 110 in Montauk, it's not... I can't discuss that, I'm afraid. We must get on. Time and tide and all that rubbish. Please tell me what the Children of Sky King's overall intention was. The children are dead. Wow, that got dark. There's not much left to tell you. I would like to hear things in your own words. Then I suppose you could say that our intention was to save the world. And how were you planning to go about doing that? By bringing the Sky King into this reality, of course. You know this already. But how would that save the world? Doctor, is this really necessary? You took away his daughters years ago and ended up killing most of them. You have already annihilated our society. I'm sure you know about uh, what uh, went, went on within it. We worshiped the king, pretending he was Satan or some other ancient god of evil. Our inner circle believed in violation as the ultimate holy act. We failed. You and the book burners destroyed us. Ooh, is this person from the Waterworks Library? And the matter has been put to rest. You seem awfully calm while, des uh, while describing the destruction of your life's work. What else can I do? I know how this is going to play out. Maybe I always did. Why do you refer to the Global Occult Coalition as the Book Burners? Were you and your group affiliated with the Serpent's Hand? Oh yeah, I'm giving Dr. Montag that voice because it seems like so pretentious and so sadistic. Which kind of makes sense for someone who would make the procedure that is 110 month. Untuck and uh, you don't even get to know how what it is because it's so unlawful. That, it's complicated. It's a simple enough question. But there isn't an answer, still. Yes, we were affiliated with the Serpent's Hand. Most of us passed through there at one time or another. They will disavow us, of course, if you ask them about us. They're not monsters like we are. They have moral precepts, you see. Their whole point is to look for wonder. Since they see no wonder in the king, they repudiate us utterly. But they know deep down that they need us. They need you? What for? Dang, that's, uh, that's mean. For the same reason they let us live. We raided the library, fought them, skirmished with them. They had a huge quantity of dirt on us. Far more than you do. But they never finished a job. 
They're as bad as you jailers in their own way. The same compartmentalizing ization, the same singular goals. Their existence is based on nothing concrete. The empty time of history, that's all. Indeed, they came into being at the same time as you. You're more similar than you realize. <sighs> That's impossible. The serpent's hand has been documented as existing long before the foundation of any incarnate. No, no, you missed a point. The library's is always been there. Yes, but not the hand. The hand was something new. Like you all are. Do you think anybody ever cared about wonder in the old days? Nobody cared about wonder. They care about food, family, and blood. What's that supposed to mean? It means... Uh, you wouldn't get it anyways. But the hand would. I think even the book runners do in their own way. But the hand is scared. They tried to blot us out. Forget us. Or what they should be but can... And never be, you see. Look, Depeche, I have tried to make things more comfortable for you, but we need some give and take. You're speaking in cryptic, in cliched cryptic riddles, and I want some answers. I can't tell you everything. You won't treat the information properly. You treat it as a scientific fact, something to be swallowed, understood, contextualized. And what is wrong with that? Why are you doing this, Doctor? Why are you dredging this stuff up again? Hmm? Hang on, I'm just gonna open these tabs and see what they're talking about here. Oh, it's that. Hmm. I should tell you, but ah, screw it. I'm tired of this. I've been working on SCP-001 for two decades, project lead for almost nine years after I came up with the procedure. I don't know. I'm tired. Everywhere I turn, I see the Scarlet King, but nothing about him makes any sense. Some bighorn devil, arcane blood god. It's also small, so obvious. The foundation has changed in the last decade. You see, we face conceptual demons. 3125, which is... I'm not sure what that is actually. Melevant genre dwellers. That's that's um Murphy. We'll read about him in another video. Sevenfold destroyers, all of which are far worse than some old sacrifice deity. But there, behind everything, I see in this smile and. I see the smile and fire, that dread, that old dread it lingers, and this is despite seeing a fa horrors far less easy and far more subtle trying to break the world on a daily basis. I just want to understand, I suppose. 
peel back the layers, the tales upon contradictory tales, find out who he really is. You're being awfully candid. To be honest, I've stopped caring. This job gets to you. The things you have to do, the regrets. Well, I'm too high up for anybody to touch me now, and I've run into too many dead ends to get hung up over protocol by this point. Just tell me something, Depeche. Anything. Okay, look, I like you. Montauk, you must be a cold-blooded bastard somewhere in there, or you wouldn't have come up with, well, who am I to judge, eh? I'll tell you where to start. I'm all ears. There are three things to understand about the Scarlet, uh, about the Scarlet King. Three laws, which when put together, could make a, make up a complete picture. One is a law of blood. One is the law of concrete, and one is the law of hallowing. Three laws, eh? That the king set down for his followers, or that were imposed upon him. Both. The first was his law, the second was somebody else's, and as for the third, well, you'll find out about the third when you've cracked the first two. Very cryptic. That's all I can tell you for now. You need to learn the proper way. That's really all you'll give. That's all. There is a pause for several seconds. Alright, Depeche, good talking with you, as ever. End log. <sighs> this is going to be a little bit of a long video, it seems. The following is an extract from the memoirs of one Jack Hurst, a defector from the children of the Scarlet King. Hurst was a high-level reality bender, capable of entering the bodies of humans in the past and experiencing their thoughts and emotions firsthand. The following is a description of what Hurst called the Battle of Gamelet, reportedly a battle between SP-001 and his followers against a group called the Children of the Erds. Hearst apparently experienced battle from the perspective of a foot soldier in SP-001's armies. These memoirs were written shortly before Hearst's death in 1976. They were among the first documents consulted by Dr. Ermontok during his investigation. 3838? Hmm. The forest was monumental, made of volcanic rock and jagged iron and built into a vast mountain. Each measurement, every angle was calculated to promote the king's ideology. The steel slats and bars may have seemed to be jutting out in random half sawn directions, but if you could see the hole then, and you'd see the cemetery. It was a perfect expression of cosmic order, expressed in endless sevens. And it's a tough trip to remember, but bits and pieces come back. We were slaves, I think. We had been taken from a far off land. The nobility looked down upon us with cruel eyes. But the king didn't care. He rewarded us, and so we were the instruments of his rule. When a village required the justice of the king, we would descend upon them with blood and iron. The villagers feared us, and that felt right to me. But when the horde came with fire and burning and the cries of freedom, the villagers were still just as scared as they had been of us. This was not the fear of their master, I think. But the fear of anarchy, they didn't know which way to turn. In the end, most betrayed us. Many had their daughters taken by our master. Old rights, blood rights, arcane rights. But we stood upon the battlements, loyal to the last, our ha hearts bursting with happiness at the rightness of it all. This isn't right at all. I'm still not sure or, or exactly what was going on. It was also chaotic and full of red smoke. 
but I could feel my host's bloodlust. We stood and watched and waited. The sound of rubble and explosions came from across the hill, and the last battle begun. Then something strange happened. My host suddenly felt afraid, and he and I were somewhere else. The sky was not red but black. I was not a slave but part of a conscripted rabble. The peasants looked up at us. They were all starving. They held out their hands, begging, pleading, praying. The wind was their master and screamed at them. The horde was coming, but they too were starving. Then it seemed flickered back, and I was in my house again, under a scarlet sky. The king's voice raged. The rabble of his armies were fleeing to the gates, but they would not open. Our arrows, coated in flame and pitch, flew back again, but the horde was undaunted. In my mind, I could see nothing but the fire. The fire of the king. I drew my sword. We all drew our swords. We charged into the fray. And then, as it were, the scene changed again. There were no battlements. Only the dark sky and the wind and a more ragged and lonely sky. The peasants pleaded. The nomads laughed, cheered, wept. The wind will rage no more, they said. The two scenes shifted in and out. A red fort led into a black field. I have ruminated on it a long time. But I think they were the same battle, seen through two different eyes. Or at least through two, the memories of two different battles. The whole thing felt strange. It was not like most of my trips. It was like a half-remembered cacophony. Two ideas ripping at each other. There was a timeline showing what really happened in that blackened wasteland. And there was one that had been made to be true, imposed throughout time on the truth. The last thing I remember was being sliced by a nomad sword. Of a frail urn being held on high. Of seven brides being ripped from a castle. Or were they ripped from a field, taken as the spoiled oils of war by some obscure tribe in some lost steep? I remember the king screaming, writhing, thrashing as he was sealed. And then I died, and woke up back at the ritual. For a second, I wondered if the others had just made up the king, and sent some image of him and back to the past. But I don't think that was true. They liked the power, and besides... It was never a total lie. There was something in that wicked wind that reminded me of some old of the older rituals. It was then that I decided to leave the children. I went that night without a word. They didn't stop me. Probably figured it wasn't worth the effort. They were so certain in success of their mission. But I want no part in that anymore. Things I saw were based upon a, a law of blood. And I couldn't be afraid that they never come to pass. Hmm. Oh. Looks like I'm out of my juice. That's painful. Document 3. The following is a log, log of all the attempts by novelist groups to force SCP-001 on its entry into Prime Dimension since the containment of SCP-231. Date. January 3rd, 2009, I'm guessing. That's what we're going by for now. Original children of the Iskara King. So, state, group of interest, and details of attempt, and end result. Summary attempt was performed by the original spearing of blood, and then the destruction of rebel recovered from the demolition of the a cock run gardens housing project complex in St. Louis, in Missouri. It is believed that the children of the Sky King manipulated state officials into the demolition over the course of several years, and this the group continued to work as the original children went into decline. Result an attempt prevented by a foundation raid. December 5th, 2012. Red Guards. Appears to be using the blood bones and spinal fluid of several animals combined with ritual ending to create a portal to SCP 001. A large number of SCP Foundation logos carved out of bone were placed around the ritual or site in a defensive position. These logos were slightly incorrectly carved. Attempt not detected by any group of interest and came extremely close to success. 
However, it appears that a critical mistake in the words of Gretrol instead resulted in a large explosive blast, destroyed all of these several members of the guards. It seems un unknown why the guards apparently wish to invoke Foundation protection for their ceremony. <sighs> February 7, 2014. Global Occult Correlation. That's interesting. Unknown. Unknown but did not succeed. GLC records pertaining to the incident are, re are missing with the exception of the name Operation Historical or Frontier with the mission statement to ask for attentions of historical time in order to bring forth and destroy significant occult or threat. It's believed that several GLC operatives were killed in the attempt. January 1st, 2017. Army of the New Dawn. And I just noticed that I've been reading all the dates wrong. And that this is actually going by the European and way of, of dates. An attempt involved the virtual burning of several calendars adhering to the Gregorian calendar. While members of the group race of blood soaked calendars adhering to the Julian. Hydro and Persian solar systems to an effigy of SCP 001. At the time of the attempt prevented by members of the service hand, all materials were recovered and taken to the Wanderers Library. September 17th, 2017. The Serpent's Hand. Largely unknown, these details are unclear, but it's believed it involved the highest collective destruction of particular books within the Wanderers Library. Attempt was for reportedly foiled due to the schism in the group, the resulting casualties severely damaged the library. Phase 2 Concrete. Document 4. The following is an interview between Dr. Robert Montauk and the person of interest 3172. April 14, 2018. Interviewer, Dr. Robert Montauk. Interviewee, person of interest, 3172. Site, location, site 713, interview room 2. The puns. Hello again, Robert. Hello, Depeche. I looked up your laws. I am afraid I am none the wiser. You'll get there. What did you find? The law of blood is referenced in quite a few places, but I couldn't find any concrete information. I worried you wouldn't. But there was only a one source of real use. A depiction of something called the Battle of Gamelet. Written by a defector from the children. Ah, Hearst, yes. I read his memoir once. The only genuine eyewitness of the king's ceiling. Although a rather unreliable one. How on earth? Oh, he embellished. He didn't leave straight away. I stumbled upon some early draft in his things, shortly before he left. I was young back then, and I remember how passionate he argued after his vision. Said that he we'd got the king all wrong, that he wasn't a demon or a monarch, but that he was a voice in the wind. When I was older and figured it all out, I suppose how close he got to a fuller understanding. He just wasn't quite there. I should have guessed he was a liar. He's not a liar exactly, just a little lost. And you only have my word for it, Doctor, which the Foundation has made abundantly clear it doesn't trust. There's no reason to doubt you. What do you have to lose? You seem as eager for me to learn the truth as I am. True, and on that note, I have a question if I may. Shoot, the longer I keep you talking, the greater a, ch a chance you'll slip up and tell me something you shouldn't. Do you know why Procedure 110 Montauk actually works? 
There is a pause of several seconds. Sorry, Depeche. I can't talk to you about that. It's okay. I think I know the answer anyway. Tell me, did you lose someone? I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry to bring back painful memories, but I've looked at the Foundation archives too, you know. It was necessary back in my day to check up on what your lot are doing to his daughters. I know that your brother... Stop talking. This interview is not about my private affairs. I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't mean... Please state the meaning. Please say for me the meaning of this law of blood. <sighs> Isn't it obvious? It is the way the Scar King ruled. There was order, but it was through the imposition of an iron will on the peasantry, through armies of slaves, through nobility bred to be cruel, the realities of this world and his quarter of the globe. What does this have to do with the with SCP Ezers or ones? It's nature. What are these utter laws? I suggest you look into this second. I don't have time to play your games. Tell me now, person of interest 3172, or you will be escorted to solitary. Oh. Dr. Montauk, I am sorry. You must look for the... A law of concrete. That is all. This term, this interview is terminated. End log. Document 5. The following is a page from the 1891 report of Agent Day A before on Lost Foundation and Archives following the, the 1889 start Arling Koo. The report was lost shortly after the uh, termination in, in 1895, along with several other documents from the Foundation archives. This page was recovered through unknown means by Dr. Montauk. No other materials from, from these data losses have been found. In summary, the document's loss are extremely extensive, covering a wide range of data concerning the Foundation's early history. Of particular note are several documents related to SCP-001 which have gone missing. However, my investigations have provided me with a great deal of information, and I believe that I can say with some certainty that the, histor er, the historical record, as stated in Scranton's comprehensive history, remains broadly intact. Albeit with some modifications, I will detail below. Grant's work states that the Foundation was founded in 1824 by the merger of 13 worldwide organizations with a particular interest in preventing awareness of anomalous activities. The most prominent of these were the Foundation of the Secure for Containment of the Unnatural, the, on each, uh, do, uh, the United States of the Department of Unexplained Affairs, the Council of Five Overseers, and the Committee of Paranormal Ethics. Scratch goes on to tell us this was done in response to the threat posed by SCP-001, and that the Gurley Foundation had an extensive role to play in that anomalous containment. However, the documents I have before me present a rather different picture. It appears that the Foundation was not found in response to SCP-001 at all, indeed. I cannot find any references is to the present SCP-001 prior to 1826. It appears to have been highly publicized by to have been a highly publicized attack by SCP-173 in New York, which was the initial impetus for the Foundation's formation. SCP-173 still unresolved container breach in 1884 is, I believe, the reason for the alteration of the record. Scranton's embarrassment at <sighs> Document 6. The following is a table compiled by Dr. Montauk. 
It shows a series of votes passed by the O5 Council correlated with incidents potentially or certainly involving SCP-001. Date of vote July 9, 1884 Vote to officially standardize documentation across the SCP Foundation passed 13 to none. A series of hymns to vote to SCP-001 heard outside out Site Site 001. Vote to standardize continued procedures for SV001. Passed 12 to 1. All members of the Five Council report dreaming of an unidentified map and of South Asian origin weeping. Vote on determination of Agent Day of Passed 6 to 5. Two absent ancients. A large quantity of blood stained sheets of paper with the words SP001 written blood over each sheet finds days to be manifested in bedrooms of all members of the 05 Council. The blood was later identified to belong to both Agent Devour and unknown species of poultry. Vote on the emission of the site system. Pass 10 to 2, 1 abstention. A location north of Eric was saw sudden and Uggs find wire fires. Residents report seeing dragons made of fire and a horned crown appear in the night sky above the area. The wildfires were found in 2007 to have begun in the location of the future Site 19. January 23, 1922. Vote on containment procedures for SCP 2317. Pass 4 to 3. 6 abstinations. Several cracks appeared in the earth near containment area 179. Red smoke has been seen pouring out of each crack for seven minutes before the cracks abruptly close. February 8, 2011. Vote to unify the project purviews of SCP-001, 231, and SCP-82317. Pass. 10 to 2. 1 abstention. A series of key elements of the vote to SCP-001 heard outside SCP outside site 001 enters first with the sound of laughter. <sighs> vote on the object class reclassification of SCP-2317. Pass 9 to 4. Several interdimensional rifts open outside containment area 179. These rifts alternate between opening on Universe Kappa Arrakesh and opening onto an unknown dimension. This unknown dimension is characterized by the presence and, uh, of a large quantity of red smoke and an unknown number of human voices screaming from within. Jesus, this is a lot. The following is an extract from um, the 1972 political work Manifesto for or Old Order by a term of our king member, Ar 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 Ariadne A. Cartwright. Cartwright's work is only found on unpublished copies among anonymous circles and groups related to SCP-001. Fragments such as this were recovered by Dr. Montauk during the course of his investigation. The sin of modernity is foul to understand. It's not that we glorify the pre-modern. The suffering was real and very extent. We must not fall into the trap of seeing the past as a, a series of beautiful arcadias, full of dancing around maypoles, as and shepherds living in pleasant anarchy. The past was brutal, but it also but it was also real. It wasn't really the pre-modern too. That's where how historians have characterized it. They are, are wet to the theory of modernization and could conceive no, of no alternative mode of development other than a singular drive towards the contemporary West, with other modes of living seen as being stuck in some imagined earlier place on a timeline. It's all nonsense. People of the past were capable of seeing the world as it really is. Those of us who have joined the King's forces can see all this truth.
that there is something very, very wrong with the world in which we live. Our buildings are made of calcifying, filling concrete. I'm sorry, where was I? As we shamble every day to jobs and lives created solely for the purpose of maintaining their own system. But there is no other way to live. Socialism, anarchism, cynical cynicalism, and these are little more than constructed pipe dreams. I don't know, they could work if you weren't selfish. The frail thoughts of lesser men trying to impose their antiquated prejudices on the world around them. I mean, one of these could work if you were a little bit less selfish. That being socialism, but go off. No, there is only one alternative way to live. To cast on the law of concrete to, is to rise up the law of blood. We must learn what it is to die. To be enslaved, truly, brutally enslaved, with no compassion or compunction from our masters. You must learn what it is to be taken towards a single purpose. To know true to know and to really understand our lack of agency, we must be beholden to a world of gods and darkness. The tempest tossed refuge is of a race of fools. We must kill modernity, post modernity, and, and with all of, all its analysis and sting observation, there is only one unrule the rule of chaos for humanity, for life, for the Scarlet King. <sighs> Clearly, I don't actually believe any of that, because that just made no sense to me. Anyway, Phase 3, The Halloween. Document 8, the following is an interview between in Dr. Robert Montauk and Person of Interest 3172. Date, April 29th, 2018. Again, the dates are getting pretty obvious now. Interviewer, Dr. Robert Montauk, Person of Interest 3172. Location, Site... Evan 13, Interview Room 2. Begin Log. Hello, Depeche. Hello, Dr. M Montauk. I hope that our last meeting... I'm sorry for my unprofessional behavior. You touched upon a sore subject. Of course. I will try to refrain from doing so in the future. Shall we begin? This time, Doctor, I have a question for you. Indeed? I suppose it can't be worse than your last. Well, what do you know about the origins of the Scholar King? There are many theories. A creature from the abyss some shambling thing of old, a denizen of Alagada. Hmm. Oh, these are all tells. That's nice. They are all, I will not say lies, but the texts have changed, the knowledge has changed, the past itself has been changed from what came after. He has changed past? No, his, chas his past has been changed for him. But now you tell me something. This should be give and take, after all. That is not what... Why did you approve the Montauk procedure? There is a pause here for several seconds as Dr. Montauk serious a person of interest, 3172. <sighs> Sorry if I have offended you. I thought I made it clear that this is none of your business. See, the thing I don't get is that it should not have worked. Not in the way the Foundation does. This is not under discussion. What happened to Jacob, Doctor? What happened to your brother? This interview is... Oh, alright, alright. I am sorry. I'm not trying to hurt you, Doctor. Truly. I just want to understand. It just, it shouldn't have worked. The child should have been born. 
There was a pause of several seconds. I was angry when I drew it up. It was unprofessional. Did you think we took Jacob? Well, what the hell was I supposed to think? I started looking into your lot, making discovery after discovery, and then he dis- Look, this isn't relevant. We might need to read this at another time. Also, I love that uh, uh, um, logo there. That's beautiful. Anyway. Alright, alright. I'm sorry, EIS. But can we agree that this uh, was not a decision made scientifically? That was done in a moment of fury, rage, hate. I didn't. The girl. I didn't mean to. But you did, Doctor. Look, I'm sorry. I don't mean to dredge these old wounds up for you. Why are you then? Because I just want to understand, and now I think I do. How? You... I don't know where to begin. Let me go back. I don't think your department has had very much activity in recent... and months. Not after the hands attempt to open the gates, right? The river procedure keeps the girl from giving birth. The nomads keep fighting their endless war. The spears are safely locked away by the book burners. The spears? My dude, I've been on the site for so long. I think you know I'm fine. Oh, the king spheres. I've never heard of that before. I'll read that. Uh, I'll read up on that later. And the devourer. Well, there's nothing you can really do about the devourer now, is there? SCP-2317 isn't SCP-001. Wasn't SCP-001. The thing is, you've been telling everything, everyone he is. Technically, you're meant to think that he is. If I understand Foundation hierarchies currently, you are only a level 4 after all. I don't understand. Across every culture and every city in Trivian Civilization, you've come across the, the idea of the Sky King. Always the same, an emperor of bread with a burning crown and an ethos rolled in the same archaic a, a fear of female sexuality. He is always the same. A monster that is all consuming and terrible, but so understandable. A big bad thing in the dark, full of R, I can't say that word, and fire and old blood ritual. Does it never strike you as odd that this is, is the thing behind the eyes? You face monsters far greater and more subtle, as you told me yourself. But always, Always, there's that lingering fear and knowledge of this hidden, but oh so simple thing standing behind it all. You know, it strikes me as odd. I told you as much myself, but I also stopped trying to make sense of our world a long time ago. The anomalous does not play by the rules of man. I was too old to start redefining the universe. But the thing you don't remember, or don't know, is that this wasn't the only past. The Scottish King used to be something very different. He wasn't a monarch and he wasn't always red. He was a whisper on the wind that kept the, peasant, that kept the peasants working, staring up, up in fear of his righteous famine. He was as an inborn knowledge of a world of gods and demons which relayed human agency and existence beyond us. He was the cold hunger of a famine that had no rhyme and reason but the cold apathy of a supernatural beyond us. And give... Given enough belief, he could be the devourer or two. He is a creature of truth. You mean he transformed from one deity to into another? The Scarlet King is not a deity, Doctor. The Scarlet King is an idea. What? But he's real, physical. We've seen. I can't tell you anymore. Not yet. Did you find 
anything out about the law of concrete? No, not much. Found out there seems to be a disturbing correlation between the activities of the king's followers and certain decisions made by the council. I see. But there wasn't much else at all. The trail led me to some lost documents, but eventually all I found was a dead end. A document into about the Foundation's origins and some insane in child ranting on about modernity. Quite right, I presumed. That makes sense. You are a madly infuriating person, you know. Why can't you just tell me this stuff properly? I am your prisoner. You did destroy my life's work. <sighs> Why should I help you? Because you're bored. Because you think none of this matters. And because you love tormenting me. I don't, you know. The Sky King is an idea. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You're close now, Doctor. Close to the truth. I can see it in you. You understand. And then you'll understand me. Why I did what I did. Why I am. Was a member of the children. I know you're curious. You do seem a... Uh, I am oddly well adjusted to be a Satan worshipper. Actually, quite the opposite. POI I 3172 actually seems to be a little bit crazy in comparison to most actual Satan worshippers. Or Satanists, as I would like to call them, because nobody really worships Satan. Other than to be edgy. Thing is, Satan is like the embodiment of a rebellion against the church. If you actually read up into it at all. Alright, okay, back to the story. Be careful, Doctor. The law of the Halloween may break you. As cryptic as ever, Spivik. Alright, until next time. Goodbye, Doctor. End log. <sighs> Document 9. The following is a translated excerpt from the 1953 Bengali work of Lala Raja. The work has been lost for some time. I don't think I said that right at all. And rediscovered by Dr. Montauk in the course of his investigation. And so as British rule continued, something began to come with them, piece by piece. A shell at first, a red thing, but it was not whole. It was not even in pieces. It was something that crept out slowly. Piece by piece, it met the shadows of our country, the mice bleeding in the rice fields, and it began to take form. It didn't have a mind, not first. It wasn't enough of a real thing yet to have one. It was a set of images. It was a red, it was a blood red slab of skin taken from the heart of some Christian demon, which was set at a pot on an ancient magician. And of Hindu rites, but then it was categorized, written down, described from with precise scientific terminology. It didn't like that. Things of magic, technology, empire that were never meant to mix all came together and began to bend the nature of the world. As Europe came to us more and more, as we learned to be civilized, our religion began to change too. And Antasheshe was not an ancient and capricious god in the form of an immense snake. It was a more array ill of a scientifically unusual size. I think I've heard of this one. This is, yep. Always, oh, it goes back to SP3000, doesn't it? No, for producing amnesiacs. An earthquake, a term for am amnesics, and used in some foundation sites at this time. And causing a cag. A needle has this effect. We learned that we were Hindu, that we ha always had been Hindu, and that all our various and mixed beliefs were our variations on a singular ideal. Because if rich were earned control enough with another way of living, which could not be classified, explained, killed like a butterfly pinned to a board. Huh. I thought a lot of people just started off in a lot of river valleys, like Egypt and stuff. Anyway, 
but beneath this lay a fury, a cry for authenticity, for reality, even as we express ourselves more and more in their language and their categories, even in our, in our struggle against them, it lay in our literature, and to Gore and the others, it lay in our Ada. A Bagoli social gathering, an involving group of friends, usually not even not exclusively in male, being a for an extended discussion of literature, social relationship, and some other aspects of life. These all took place over the course of several hours. In our meager old jobs as clerks, the endless struggling tension between old and new, between modernity and pre-modernity, and in those fault lines, in that cry of rage and fury, in our hatred of the old and the hatred of the new, there rose a height I afraid of being nothing but the law of the howling. There rose the Lala Raja, which I'm not uh, I'm pronouncing right because I don't know how. Please forgive me if you actually know how to pronounce this word. Because what is he but the cry of a uh, for forgotten age? He is a British peasant staring up at the red sky, the Bengali widows weeping in shaven head. The Aztec priest rifting in another heart, another's heart. He is all those things transformed as modernity. He does everything into modernity's own destruction. He is the resistance, the fury, the hatred of all th all that was for all that presently is. But we were was full of good and evil, and all else mixed together. The happiness, the beauty of the world, the struggles and heartache and reality of it all. But now we have lost almost all of it to the machine, except our rage. That's all that's left, and thus comes the king, the howl of the destroyed and forgotten and oppressed. His only purpose is to destroy, our word that I'm not going to say, maim, enslave, and smile. Smile that smile of a king whose enemies weep before him. He cannot exist where there is no, mo no modernity, because his entire purpose is given to him by modernity. He is a god of blood, a god of, blo of spine and bone and sinew, to remind the dancers of this world that it is not good. It is cruel and hateful, and that is good. That is right. Modernity is a sin, and he is the correction, so we can once again live as we must, cold and hungry and starving and very, very afraid. My goodness, this is like an hour-long video already. <sighs> Document 10. The following note was found in Dr. Montauk's personal quarters. It is believed to have been written shortly after Dr. Montauk's discovery of La, La Raja. SCP-001 is a conceptual entity created the boundaries of modern and the pre-modern. Scar King is a thing of blood and, and bone and sinew. His role is just the dress of the dark. SCP-001 is a creature and for a physical being made, it manifests in a conceptual. He comes with fear and a sword dripping with rat at the fire. SCP-001 originated in ancient Turkmenistan. It is believed that it was originally a, a Scythian deity who they rode with thunder in the hooves and a bow on their backs, laughing at they slot. SCP-001 is scientific phenomenon. It will be classified. It will be contained, described. It will be understood as an anomalous entity, as with every other. Er, and but he exists in the cracks, the fault lines. He feeds on description. He feeds on science, on the objective principles and qualities. Seven chains, seven in brides, seven sink ills for the scarlet. I am Robert Montauk, Level 4 Researcher, Project Lead on SCP-001. I am a researcher. I impose my solid mechanical will. I am in control. I possess agency. I possess agency. I am a quivering thing looking up at a dark and cloud and sky, fearing the almighty God. I am free. I am chained. I am a doctor. I am a child. <clears throat> mm. 
Hmm. On May 22nd, 2018, uh, Dr. Fernandez 11, by the way, a large crack appeared in the wall of Press of Interest 3172's containment chambers. The crack appeared to open to another dimension. A large quantity of red smoke could be seen pouring out of it, while an unknown number of human voices could be heard screaming from it. The audacious staff found themselves unable to enter uh, Purse of Interest 3172's container and, and chamber. Purse of Interest 3172 informed them that he would only permit Dr. Monta to uh, enter into his chamber and would communicate with nobody else. After some debate, Dr. Montauk was permitted entry into the container chamber to interview a person of interest under 172. A log can be found below. Date, May 22nd, 2018. Interviewer, Dr. Mer Montauk, Dr. Robert Montauk. Interviewee, person of interest, 3172. Location, Site, 713, Humanoid Container Chamber, 77. It's always sevens. Begin log. <coughs> Dang. <sighs> Dr. Montuck enters the chamber and approaches person of interest 3172. Person of interest is standing in front of a jagged crack in the fire wall. Red light and smoke can be seen emerging from this crack. Hello there, Depeche. Hello, Doctor. Always formal, even to the last, aren't you? Can I ask you what this is? A plea for attention, mostly. I want to see you again, and my requests were all denied. It's been weeks, Doctor. I... I had nothing to ask you. I thought so. You have the truth, haven't you? Maybe. Yes. The crack springs slightly. It... Did that just... <sighs> it grows and shrinks depending on the situation. Different actions have different meanings, and thus different effects. It all depends on the context. The other children never really got that, but well, they never got anything really. They thought we were all devil worshippers, hanging for violation. Only I understood the point. It took me a while to understand. I didn't think you would. <coughs> Just tell me, did the procedure even matter? What we do, is it even relevant? To prevent the birth. It had to be something awful, something evil expressed in pain and rage and fury. That is why it worked. It was never a sincere attempt to formulate a scientific pro uh, procedure on your part. It was just pure, unadulterated hatred. Wrapped in a veneer of objectivity. You thought that a king had taken your brother, so you decided to hurt the king. You didn't, of course, and what you do each day to that poor girl is little more than mere cruelty. But effective cruelty. The specifics are unimportant, but the intent. That matters for everything. I... I should stop it. I didn't. And then what? The Foundation won't get it. They will never understand the law of the Halloween. If I explain, they can't imagine it. It's beyond their conception of reality. But you might. So tell me, Doctor, do you know why the Is Iskar King exists? Because modernity and free mother... No. Because the SCP Foundation exists, modernity helped shape them, define the contours of his rage. But it was as when modernity started interfering in his kingdom that he was crystallized. Modernity in the form of you. Your lot came first. 
You came into being to lock away, classify, pin down everything that didn't fit into your philosophy of enlightenment, rationality. Everything had to be understood, contextualized, transformed from fairy and godhood into simple, comprehensible chunks of logic and matter. It's abhorrent, and it could never go on forever. Something had to give. Something had to rise up in opposition. <sighs> we were first? Truthfully? I know that Brevar had... Was this whole thing really our fault? That depends. Is it your fault if you don't know you're doing it? I don't know. Sometimes I would say yes. Neither do I. The ceremonies, they all held that contrast. The king cannot exist without that tension. We need the symbols of modernity, the stark gray images, to make the rift in the first place. It was the perfect plan. But you failed. Yes. There is a pause for several seconds. The foundation was formed in the 1820s. It was formed to protect the world from the dark by a collection of brave men and women to secure, contain, protect. That is our purpose. There is a virtue to normalcy, which I don't think you can see. The world can be understood. Truth, reason, rationality, the enlightenment. These are our bedrock. These are what have allowed us to see what is objective. Do you really believe that? I have to. You're a scientist. You should know that there's no such thing as an objectively true finding in any science. There's always room for doubt. Always space for error. But that's just as humanity. We have flawed minds, incapable of full interpretation. We observe a solid and real, beneath it all, the laws, the bedrock. The bedrock is defined by the number seven. Seven chains. Seven brides. Seven seals. Seven, seven, seven. My whole life has been defined by that number. It tortures me. Endless. Have to go on all shapes. That's thing behind my eyes. We're not allowed to live. We're not allowed to be people. I mean, he literally lives in a room. He, he lives in humanoid containment chamber 77, and what and his and his person of interest never has seven in it. That is the luxury of modernity. Despite its coldness and its creaking wounds, do you have to be a full person? Seven, 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 seven girls taken away by the freighters in the cold as the wind even howled and howled. So the Oscar King had to have seven brides. Modernity is not always cold. It's less cruel than slavery. But what is it for? Is that the only purpose? A mere absence of brutality? What's the point of having peace and kindness for its own sake? So you could smile for a few decades before falling dead into an empty grave? Self affirmation for a finite self? I don't understand it. I never did. I grew up trying. I want to be like them. Like you. But the system just stared down at me with contempt. Maybe it's not coldness, Doctor. Coldness seems too objective. It can't be that. Because there is no objectivity. There's just the screaming and the madness and the need for purpose. Did you really think that nothing is true? There's truth, but it's never final. There's no ultimate reality, Doctor. No totality. No concrete way in which the world is run. There's just what we make of it. The clay things we bind together and cruelly make in clay. All this introspection. The crack in the wall grows louder. The sound screaming can be heard. Who was in there with them? Who knows? His seven brides, his loyal nomads, ancient servants, more creations of the gap between realities. 
I don't know anymore. It all breaks down in the end. All I see anymore is the fire. I don't see the world, or gods, or kings. I don't see anything but the flames. What else is there? The stuff, matter, and the physical? All but not I, all fake. I only see the smile of my king, forged out of burning and frail matter. And it's a sight that hurts. It hurts so much behind the eyes. It is burning and being consumed, and it's never, ever finished. Then why not stop worshipping him? I was a frail thing. I was born in the cold and the dark. I tried my hand at writing when I was very young. I tried my hand at, at many things. Bartering, starving, surviving in the marketplace places of Okuda. I think I said that uh, word wrong. Like so many of us, struggling to live while you Uwesos grew fatter on, on our forgotten wealth. I grew mad. There was no meaning. No purpose in a country born to rift apart. I tried the gods, but they were silent. I tried to reason in atheism, but they were just as empty and unreal. Because they were always going to be. Because... Don't say it. You have to hear it. I... I don't want... No. Listen, Robert. Just listen. You know now what the Scar King is. He is a creation of swirling anomalies of so many different times all over the world. He is the memory of a world that is lost. The pre-modern world made manifest in a form of hatred for modernity, the new, the humanism, smiling coldness that marks our day-to-day -day existence, forged from a perfect a balance of irreconcilable anomalies and our breaking minds. He is an entity created by this overwhelming, unavoidable tension of the how of the old world when faced with the cold, old, gray, purposeless, new. He is the revenge of our fallen past. He is the idea of the ancient world and a world which discards and fetishizes it. He is the tension between modern and the pre-modern made manifest. Yes, he is the fault line between two eerie a concealable world, and he can only, in the end, destroy them all. And that is what is right. There is another pause for several seconds. What do we do now? You shoot me. Let them take my corpse. Go back to your life. It won't last us long now. The king's coming is inevitable. You might try to do something to stop it, but it won't work. The foundation has too much at stake. Too much resting on the preservation of their ethos. They will cut the war... Old and concrete gate, Ray, and the king will rise from the ashes, and the children won't even have to live a, lift a finger. I don't believe you. Believe what you like. Come, doctor. I think it's time. Dr. Montauk takes out his firearm and points it at a person of interest, 3172. Look, just tell me one more thing. Was it you who took Jacob? No. We had no idea who he was. Dr. Montauk terminates person of interest, 3172. The crack disappears. End log. <sighs> the following is a record of O5 Council Vote number four thirty nine eighty five Council Vote. 4985 vote to approve suggestions made by Dr. Robert Montauk on foundation operating procedures for improved containment of SCP-001, proposed by 0513 on May 30th, 2018. 4, 052, 056, 057, 0510, and 0513. Against 051, 053, 058, 059, 0511, and 0512. Abstain, 054 and 055. 
Vote denied. Stand by by Dr. Mont by 051. Dr. Montauk's investigations have been most illuminating. They have certainly raised serious concerns about how the Foundation has been operating in recent years, but we feel that his suggestions go too far. The ethos of the Foundation is comprehension. Postmodern and notions of the fallible of objective universal truths are all very well in academic circles, but the Foundation has always been first and foremost concerned with practicalities, based its analysis on the hard sciences and unquestionable truths. Changing our intentions and motives off and I is frankly an absurd proposition. Our duty is, and always has been, to die in the dark to protect those in the light. If we begin to abandon or redefine the notion of what dark and light are, we risk a sharp descent into tyranny, incoherence, and the loss of our mission entirely. This must not happen. We cannot engage in cavalier cav definitions of what the Foundation's very essence is. We thank Dr. Montauk for his work, and we will be accordingly updating SV001's classification to SAFE as a result of it. Containing SV001 is no longer as difficult as it once was, despite its potential danger. If Montauk's information is correct, then it seems clear to us that the Foundation should simply take a more laissez-faire attitude towards SV001's containment. We look forward to more protective containment in relationship with our oldest anomaly going forward. Now, what is this? An unknown file. I watched, hidden as her bulldozers came. Prime land wasted on trees, as they said. They ripped them up, sliced their roots, took them away to be ma made into tables, chairs, or other monotonies. Then over weeks and months, they flattened it. They poured concrete into the rest. It was scraped and shaped, cut into neat little squares, arranged precisely in an orderly fashion. Walls rose up, great walls of concrete windows, their measurements precisely regulated, a series of standardized bricks for other parts, construction crews and, and workmen, and all the rest working efficiently and precisely for a long time, filling in the details, the furnishings, and precise abstract wallpapers and everything else that went into making a facility. Finally, it was finished. One single new tree had been planted in the center of the central courtyard. Not through any sense of whimsy or delight, but to give those within a little sense of nature, of reality, in the center of the gray. To keep them sane, nothing more. A precisely mandated allowance for the improvement and of human mental health until they can find a way out to phase that out entirely. I watched, and I thought about out all that they ate that we had done. I thought about the world they wanted. I thought about their spinelessness. I knew what good was and what evil was. I saw none of it in either of them. I thought about hollow men made of straw, plastered together with thick paste and sold in a hundred, a thousand identical ways and a thousand identical shops. I thought about what we had lost, and I howled. At night, the day before the site's grand opening, I dug up the seeds of the tree and replaced them with a seed of my own devising, and the oversight 231 will stand a thing of blood and bone and sinew, a tree that drifts and lives and feeds. It will drift strange fire, and that fire will, will both burn and warm in equal measure. They will look up at it and wish they had listened while well, they had the chance. I know this path is wrong, but at least it is a path. With thoughts and prayers, Robert Montauk, Child of the Scarlet King. <sighs> Another long video. Let's go. If you like that video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. It seems like SCP-001, in this case, was about the Scarlet King. I just seem to just turn into more about... an argument against my modern stuff or whatever. It was fun to voice act the characters, so. though. <clears throat>
even if maybe these long videos are starting to hurt my throat. I think tomorrow I might find, I might try to find a really short backrooms video to ooh, read out for you lot. Anyway, I will be seeing you again tomorrow. Until then, goodbye. Oh yeah, don't forget to ooh, um watch my stream. I should probably get a link of that. Anyway, until tomorrow, goodbye!